Hey, Greg. Uh, thanks for joining the Talent Podcast here to answer a uh, load of questions from the community about uh, the release around uh, version 20 for 3CX. Uh, great to be here. I really appreciate the invite and uh, quite excited to talk about V20 today with you. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump right into it with the question of the hour. When is the release date? <laughs> Honestly, it will probably be, be out by the time this podcast goes live. So uh, it's imminent. Uh, it's, it's, we, our guys are working around the clock, literally uh, trying to get everything ready. Uh, we're already in a release candidate. We'll probably have a release candidate too, um, possibly even in the next day or so. So uh, literally it is, it's absolutely imminent and uh, a lot of buzz around it, a lot of excitement. So uh, all of us, including those internally in 3CX, we're all really excited to see it hit the shelves officially here very soon. Absolutely. I know it's like uh, uh, I'm a kid on Christmas right now and uh, what timing <laughs> to to have this version come out, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I know uh, one question with these large updates is a lot of customers um, tend to make sure that there's uh, there's the full release out before uh, moving from the previous version. Um, so a big question from the community is how long will V18, V18 be supported once V20 is released? Well, it's a great question. And quite honestly, we do get that a lot. Um, that's something that's not a definitive date on that. Uh, it's very difficult for us to nail that down. We do like to give partners and customers as much uh, lead time as possible to prepare for the upgrade. Uh, but a lot of it depends on uh, potential security vulnerabilities that maybe uh, come up that are not, uh, not there now, but they may come up at some point in the near future. You just never know what's going to present itself. And so uh, some of that is outside of our control. Uh, we really want to keep things on the up and up when it comes to safety and security. So that's a big one. Um, but ultimately, we've, we've done as good a job as we could in the past trying to manage that, giving people plenty of time. Um, but ultimately, we don't have a hard date. Um, but we'll, we'll make some announcement on that as soon as we have more information. But I can't imagine it would be uh, any time in Q1 uh, because we'll still be rolling out, um, you know, SP1, SP2, which will have some uh, some significant updates as we're migrating everything into V20 and the new admin console, et cetera. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of time that we'll be supporting 18, give people um, all that they need to be able to migrate. That's a that's a perfect answer. I think that'll uh, add a lot of comfort to the partner partner base. Um, now on to some more exciting stuff. What are some standout features in version 20 that we should be excited about? What are your personal favorites? Well, there's quite a few of those. Um, I'll kind of hit some highlights, and I'm sure it will address potentially even some other questions that you might have uh, geared up for me. But the big one is the new uh, call manager. Uh, some people call it a SIP server, but ultimately it's kind of the backbone of the PBX. It's how we're uh, processing the calls, et cetera. And the way it's being redeveloped, and we haven't rebuilt it, we've enhanced it, um, we've enabled additional functionality with it over the years, but ultimately we haven't rebuilt it in 15 years. Um, so we wanted to kind of ground up, redesign it for better performance, better capabilities ultimately. And so for me, what we're looking at, uh, we haven't done all the stress tests yet, but it will come very soon. Uh, but we're looking at potentially a 50, 60, maybe 70% increase in capability of the PBX in order to handle, uh, and we've always said kind of unlimited extensions, but really um, a lot of that has to do with how users are interfacing with the PBX. Are they using smart clients? Are they using PWA? Are they using a Windows client? Are they using uh, an IP phone? So how they're interacting with the PBX puts different resource demands on the system. So we, we kind of did testing and we felt comfortable saying, you know, say 4,000 extensions um, is comfortably handled by the PBX. And look, we do have some even in North America that have seven, eight, 9,000 extensions that are still functioning properly, uh, but we don't really recommend more than that four to 5,000 range. With this new call manager, 
uh, we hopefully will see at least a 50% increase in that, potentially higher. So maybe now we'll do six to seven, potentially 8,000 comfortably tested um, in, uh, in V20. So that is a massive improvement in what 3CX can do capability-wise. Again, that's further launching us into that enterprise space, which is where 3CX is really trying to take over. And we are, we're already doing it. This is gonna give us much more firepower to be able to do that. That makes total sense. Um, yeah. It seems that uh, every, single, uh, every single update, it just, uh, things get bigger, things get easier. Um, yeah. Which leads a little bit into my next question. Um, one thing with 3CX is how easy it is to deploy. Um, and I've seen in the past, each version gets even a little bit easier to deploy. Could you share some uh, insight on the enhancements made in that area? Well, I think a lot of that has to do, uh, it's, it's, it's a multifaceted answer. But yeah, it's a great question. Uh, but the answer is multifaceted because yes, part of the overall strategy of 3CX as a company is simplicity, efficiency, trying to make things easy. So many other systems, our competitors you know, that are on every street corner, uh, they're very complex systems for the most part, especially your big names. Uh, very complex to configure initially and to maintain. Well, we're trying to make zero admin a reality. We want people to be able to set it and forget it. And that's not always possible, but that's our overall prevailing strategy. So with deployment, uh, you, you know, we've made it super easy to deploy directly uh, from your partner portal. And that's been there. Uh, but we're in continually enhancing our partner portal from a back end. Now, maybe you don't see a big change in the interface, uh, but the back end is continually being developed and upgraded. Again, trying to help facilitate um, an ease of use. So when it comes to deployment, one thing you will see uh, is we've taken all those, um, we'll call them self-hosted instances, and we've moved the ISO into their marketplace. And so we were working providers that only had my, uh, marketplaces. Um, that way you could go, we update the ISO, we keep it there for you, you can go and basically deploy directly from there. We had a lot of partners saying, hey, but what about light sale? It's inexpensive, it's easy to use. And so we re-enabled LightSail to be deployed directly from your partner portal, uh, which way we had it previously because they do not have a marketplace. So that was a nice step forward for us. I was glad we saw that come around. And then ultimately with our hosted product, again, easier than ever to deploy, just a few clicks and you're looking at a dedicated instance. I think the last time I did it was about eight minutes start to finish. And then I can literally start setting up my PBX. If I go for the SMB product, which is our shared resource hosted uh, PBX, I, literally it was 20 seconds before I was ready to start configuring users, connecting trunks. So that is a major step forward, especially for those. And I know most of our partners globally, if you look at the most common is that 10 to 20 user space. If you're looking at 20 seconds to set up a PBX, I don't think there's anyone else in the market that can compete with that type of efficiency. So major, major step forward with 3CX and in V20, it only gets better. That's incredible. Um, you're, you're talking a lot about the hosting side. That uh, is a perfect um, segue into the next question. Um, we've heard some rumors that there's gonna be new up, uh, during the new update, it's gonna require more server resources than in the past. Well, I, I've heard that too. I've seen some questions bouncing around our forum, but ultimately I, I don't know that that's necessarily correct. Uh, I think you, we did put out a post recently that said for your small instances, you will need at least two cores. Right, that's to make sure that audio quality is above board and that at no point that, that single core is uh, basically over demand on resource and ultimately the PBX suffers. So that's just uh, kind of a fail safe. Everything beyond that, V20 is designed at core to be more efficient, more performant. So I think we'll actually see overall a decrease in system requirements. And so what you'll find will, update our website pretty soon with our hardware requirements and we'll give you those updated numbers. I just talked to one of our engineers yesterday who was kind of going through that with me. And so I think we got a lot to look forward to there. It will actually hopefully save 
space and resource. Wow, that's awesome. I think that's the best answer possible. Um, <laughs> can you share a little bit more about the new management console concept, having everything wrapped uh, under one uh, user interface and how that's going to make it easier for sure. management and deployment? No, absolutely. And we've had a lot of questions about that. Uh, some positive, some uh, skeptical, uh, but ultimately we've renamed the management console, which everybody's kind of grown to love. We've renamed it the admin console and we've migrated it from a separate login right into your web client. The concept is why log into multiple places? Again, going with that same theme and strategy of simplicity. Part of it is uh, logging into the old management console. It was old code. Uh, we wanted something more secure, safer, faster. And so it is a nice upgrade to migrate that into a single pane of glass. Um, so again, that's step one. Step two, looking at it, a lot of people were saying, well, hey, there's maybe some missing pieces. To that, we've rolled out some blog posts and we will roll out more. The goal is to migrate everything in V20 once we get, I think, Service Pack 1 and 2 uh, deployed, which we'll find that early next year, you're going to see all the functionality that you've grown to love all in that admin console. Again, one easy to log into interface. If you have admin rights, um, so system owner, system admin, group owner, group admin, you can click on that admin cog and it will open up that uh, window and then you'll have whatever rights that you have to configure. You can go in and start doing that very simply right from your web client. So again, the whole point is simplicity as well as safety and security. Awesome, awesome. So just to be clear, I think um, what I've heard uh, kind of around the, the channel is a lot of people think what they're seeing right now is the final product. If I'm understanding right now, we're looking at a beta right now and there's, and there's plenty more to come. Well, that's the thing. Yes, we've we've pretty quickly jumped through uh, two or three pretty significant updates from kind of that sneak peek we rolled out several uh, over a month ago, and then we went to an alpha, beta, beta two, and then now we're in release candidate, getting ready to have release candidate two. Every time there's one of these releases, you're seeing more and more functionality roll in. So a lot of those questions that people had, we've already answered with. Uh, the latest reiteration of the, the client. So what I'm seeing too is, um, and, and we kind of addressed it a little bit in our initial uh, opening statements there, um, we don't advise anyone to launch in an active uh, live corporate environment a anything other than a full release. Please don't deploy you know, a beta and sell that because it's still in the testing phase. That's why it's a beta version. So um, I can't, uh, can't say that strongly enough. Um, it should go without saying, but we have had some people push back on that. Um, that's meant for the lab. It's meant for your testing engineers. Go in there, see how things work, get familiar with the new look and feel, the interface. Um, and when it's release, uh, full release, then you can deploy it in that live corporate environment. That sounds, uh, that sounds perfect. It, may, it sounds like a, a perfect use case for the free NFR keys right now. Let's not be putting in, in live environments. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so moving on to the uh, next question here, uh, will there be any way of bulk management? Um, things like queues, agents, uh, supervisors, adding multiple queues at once instead of clicking one by one, some type of import feature, anything along those lines? Well, there's definitely some big uh, improvements planned there. And that kind of leads me into one of the questions I know is burning on you because I get it from virtually every partner and I have uh, since we moved to V16, and that's with APIs. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce about four new APIs. It'll be the MyPhone API, which will give you call control on the client. We have an X API or XAPI API, which will give you configuration control, where you can kind of automate some of that. We're obviously using now, and we're further improving it in V20, the Make Call API, triggering calls, and doing it much more efficiently and effective. And then we still have the, the previously, I'll call it the legacy call control API, uh, which was a server-based call control. And what we're going to do with all of these, we're going to provide some sample code uh, so that people can kind of get a better understanding of how it works, as well as 
uh, proper documentation. And our, our CEO joked with me recently, Zach, he said, um, we're well, not just with me, but with a lot of uh, our VIP partners at an event we had. And he said, you know, our developers are great and many of them are at making APIs. One thing they're not great at doing is providing proper documentation. It's like getting water from a rock. So, um, but one of the things that we're really pushing our guys to do, document it, provide some sample code, some examples, um, so that your developers can then take it and run with it. So um, with that, there will be that automation process to where you're not going to have to click through everyone every time um, in these manual procedures. You'll be able to automate a lot of the functionality like you were just talking about. That you did take the words out of my mouth. Um, that's actually another question that I have, and uh, I'm glad we were able to get a sneak peek into the, the API news because you're right. That's uh, burning, a, burning a hole in the community right now. Uh, it's a big ticket item. Uh, so many of our guys are very savvy. Maybe they've got their own in-house developers and this will enable them, really empower them uh, to do more and do it with larger installs. Cause it is, you know, if we're honest, it is the larger installs that are requiring this type of thing. So again, we're trying to give you the tools to be more successful and compete uh, in a much more effective way in that larger enterprise. Uh, amazing. Um... Now, one question that I've uh, seen in the community that I'm interested in as well is um, with the, uh, uh, I see a growing number of customers asking for an easy way to switch active calls between your IP slash desk phone uh, over to your mobile app slash soft phone. Um, has that been considered? Is there, is there any rumors of that being um, released anytime soon? You know, to me, I, 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 I understand the question, but I also know our PBX well enough to know it already exists in the PBX. And it's literally as simple as, because I do this every day. So if I'm on my IP phone or I'm on my web client and I'm getting ready to walk out the door and I want to put that on my iPhone, all I have to do is hit transfer and dial my own extension and I pick it up on my iPhone and I walk out the door. So I don't know how much simpler people are looking for, but to me, that's a pretty easy way to do it. And you can do that with any of the endpoints, not just with your mobile. I can switch between, you know, web client, PWA, Windows client, or uh, an IP phone. I can do it all just simply by transferring to my own extension. Now we do have in the web meeting, and this is something I would like to see. I don't know personally if there's plans for it, but I love it in the web meeting. I can, I can basically scan the QR code and pass that meeting directly over uh, to my smartphone client. Um, to me, that's a pretty smart way of doing that. And I also use that one almost daily because I do so many web meetings. So, uh, so a lot of that functionality, uh, Zach, to go back to the question, it's already there. Um, it's just a matter of training people to use Well, it. don't shoot the messenger, Greg. That was uh, a question from the community. Um, but I couldn't <laughs> agree more. I'm, I'm so glad that you yeah. said that because that's a, I think that's a overlooked feature um, that people don't think was intentional. It was a, it's a fantastic feature of 3CX to be able to transfer the call to yourself. And um, I'm, I, ho I hope more people will use it after hearing this podcast. Well, we also have, you know, your orbital parking. Um, you know, and a lot of people are using that. We've got some call centers and other larger uh, installs that are using parking and actually ask us to expand the capabilities of it because they use it so heavily. So uh, again, there's, there's quite a few options in that regard. That makes total sense. Now, um, one thing that I've noticed because I travel a lot for work and I'm in uh, our team sales queue um, and I, I wouldn't call it an issue, but it's uh, uh, not having the ability to see lost queue calls on the smartphone app opposed to being on my, my desk phone. Um, is, is that going to be addressed? Are you familiar with that issue? I am familiar with that issue because I also manage sales queues. Um, I manage the sales team. Um, yeah, look, it, it is something that I would love to see. I don't know specifically if that's on our future roadmap. I know it has been discussed. It's definitely come up in our forums. And uh, I would encourage anyone um, that's really passionate about that, because it is quite important, uh, go into our ideas forum if you're a gold or higher partner and upvote that specific issue. Because what our senior management does, they basically look at that ideas forum, they see which feature requests have the highest votes. And then that's what they typically try and prioritize. Sometimes it's not possible. Maybe people are asking for things that uh, we just simply can't do and for various reasons. 
Um, and this, I'm not sure what, what it looks like as far as roadmap, uh, but I would encourage you, go and upvote it, and it will have a much higher probability of being addressed in the near that future. That makes total sense. And on that note of the idea forum, um, I'm not sure if you know this, but Talents try to assemble our own army of partners um, where in our monthly monthly newsletter, we come up, we have all of our partners submit us ideas for 3CX. Um, we'll post them under our account. We'll put them on the monthly newsletter and say, hey, this was our, our best idea from our, our partner base. Go ahead and update, uh, upvote it. Um, so we want all of all of the partners yeah, working perfect. together to get these ideas to the top of the board. Um, no, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, a little side note on that. So last year, um, we actually went through and implemented the top 10 forum requests. We managed to get all 10 uh, of the top ones and they were actually implemented. So I want to say that basically to emphasize to our partner base everywhere that we really do take your ideas to heart if it's possible. Um, we try our best to do it. It's, it's not always possible. There's no guarantee, uh, but we really do. Uh, we take an, an active listening approach and we want to give you a, a product that empowers you to sell it and, and do well, expand in the market. Cause if you grow, we grow. Uh, so it's in our benefit. Um, as a hundred percent. No, I've actually had uh, specific ideas of mine in the past. I've seen have came in later releases. So um, I think our, our voices yeah, are definitely perfect. heard and it's a great, great spot to um, uh, add those ideas. Um, moving a little bit away from uh, that current topic, um, as users and groups, uh, user groups and departments are growing in functionalities, it would be great to give system admins control of who can call who. Uh, one group can't call another, one group can call, no call another, um, those types of rights. Does that make sense? And uh, is that on the roadmap at all? Um, I think what we're seeing, and yes, it does make perfect sense. Um, and I think that's something, uh, honestly, I really think we'll develop into that. It probably won't be in the initial release, but I think you'll probably see uh, further development on our groups slash departments. Now we're actually calling them departments uh, in V20. Um, and, and we've done that really to facilitate what we call um, our SMB product. Uh, we will roll out what we call the MCM multi-company mode where Let's say you have your own data center. You want to host your own SMB product, which is a shared resource slash multi-tenant product. So we developed the group slash departments to be able to facilitate that. Um, and so that's where this development is coming from. And it is a work in progress. We are expanding that. Uh, you will see additional functionality uh, because it's a real key point for us. So, yeah, I feel pretty good about saying uh, that we'll see that. I No chance I could give you a hard uh, date on it because, you know, with anything in development, you don't know what will pop up in front of it to, you know, maybe offset the timeline that you're focused on. So, uh, but again, definitely a valid request and definitely something. That sure, that makes total sense. Um now we already you already uh, briefed over this this uh, the answer for the, for this question, but I'm sure uh, no one would mind hearing it twice. Um, was there any anything else you wanted to add on the news around the public API? Well, I think um, yeah. So it's it's hard to say because I'm not a developer. Um, I, I, I'm still waiting to get the full download. I'd love to be able to give you guys full spec sheet. Here's what you can expect to do. But honestly, we're still waiting on that even internally. Um, but what we've been told is the old uh, call control API, which people, many people have been developing around through version 15.5, um, that's still there. We're not taking it away. We will further document it. And that's what people were using to do custom integrations of many different kinds, build custom reports, uh, and develop a lot of other tools around 3CX. So with the uh, X API, uh, with that My API, there'll be a call routing API as well um, that we're going to roll out that I didn't mention. So you're going to see the ability um, to, to add a lot of dynamic changes to 3CX um, and automate things where, you know, as it is currently, you're going to have to go in and maybe modify an extension click by click, whereas here you could basically automate that with your own system. So um, again, I don't have specific details. I'd love to share them if I had them, but even internally, we're still waiting on the final specs 
uh, to see. I'm not going to beat you up about that because you've already made me a, a very happy man just hearing that <laughs> it's uh, it's on its way. So that's the best news I could have heard all day. Um, well, let me add one more thing to that. Sorry, I just thought of something I think may be interesting, not just to you, but to everyone, is um, we're looking at implementing a Whisper API um, to be able to do some a AI integration. Um, and that's going to be quite dynamic because it will allow, say, transcriptions uh, that could be uh, basically facilitated. And it will be done like at a third of the cost of Google transcriptions. And it will give like sentiment anal analysis. So you could look at the overall sentiment, how this call is going. Um, and be able to respond accordingly. So uh, it'll give a lot greater insight into active live calls, not just post-call trans, uh, transcriptions. So um, again, to me, that's also a pretty huge one. That makes, uh, that makes total sense. And that's uh, extremely exciting. Um, the, the whole world's getting taken over by AI. So, so why not start adding it into 3CX? <laughs> <laughs> 3CX is gonna get on board for sure. It's definitely on our radar. Um, and I'm sure, as with everything, you'll see a lot of development around that because it is definitely the way many technologies are progressing quickly. That makes total out. sense. Um, now, this is a question a little bit out of my scope because I don't work as often in uh, Europe, but I'm sure you, you can uh, relate to this. Um, many companies uh, and authorities in Europe, the Windows Store is deactivated for security reasons. Um, so how can such companies and authorities install the new version 20 client? Um, is there alternative ways other than the Windows Store to to access that download? Um, we've purposely chosen to go with the Windows Store for a couple of reasons. One, uh, for control, and two, it adds an additional layer of security. So I, I think for us, security is really the prevailing reason. Um, I don't know that we'll enable, we, we're certainly not gonna give uh, like an MSI where you could do mass deployment. I know we've had quite a few people ask that question, uh, but for safety and security, we just feel like uh, we really can't do that. Now, whether in the future that changes and we do enable some type of uh, you know, MSI, uh, for example, or being able to, to grab that from somewhere else, I couldn't say on that, but for the moment, uh, we just don't feel like it's safe to be able to it do makes that. total sense. I think that's an acceptable answer in the name of security. Everybody wants, uh, I, I think everyone prefers security over uh, not, not security. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Uh, now, uh, is it, this might be a bit more difficult uh, question to word, but um, with the new version, having everything under one, one client, uh, what is the best way to separate that normal work versus administrative activities? Um, for an example, is there a way to at least have a password prompt come up before accessing those admin functions, or is the administrator going to have everything on, on one interface? Well, I, look, it's a good question. I think it's a fair question, but um, yeah, at the, at the moment, I'll, I'll say up front, there's no plans to add a separate Again, we're trying to simplify that would add a, an additional layer of complexity that I don't think we would want to do. Uh, with that being said, you know, your normal web client, unless you click on that admin tab, you don't see the admin side of things. So I think there's a natural separation already. Um, and then when you click on that admin cog and it opens up your admin uh, console, then you've got that, you know, similar to your management console now you know, all of that configurability. So uh, again, I think the natural separation is already built there and I don't believe there's any need to further complicate that with a separate- That makes again. total sense. I can understand that. Um, just another question from the, the community. Um, is there gonna be any option to minimize the system tray? Um, at the moment, I don't have an update on that. That's one of those things that I hope will come. We've had a lot of people ask, um, but we'll wait and see. That's still in consideration by our development team. So I don't really have much of an update. I think that, that's okay. You've uh, answered so many questions here today, Greg. Um, we're in the final stretch, so I'm not going to hold you too much to it. Um, but there's been some, <laughs> some extremely productive questions. Um, one issue I have seen while adding a user through the new admin console is the inability to specify the user's extension. Um, now, I'm going to catch myself there because I believe that's resolved now, isn't it? 
That is correct. Once we released, I think, beta two, that was resolved. And that's what I was saying. A lot of people brought up issues in our forums or in different uh, public uh, spaces. And then we've, uh, uh, they've noticed it was not a full release as we've progressed into later uh, versions of uh, V20. Um, you'll see a lot of those things that people were talking about have already been resolved. So I know one of the questions, I'll go ahead and address it without you even saying it. Um, there's been people asking about bridging. Uh, bridging, if you upgrade from V18 to V20, that bridge will still exist and will still function. You just will not be able to edit it yet. Now, once we get into SP1, that will be addressed, and then you'll go back to being able to modify mm. at additional bridges. Um, and there, there'll be other things like that, call flow design as well. Uh, people want to be able to have that assurance that if they upgrade that call flow that's been designed in 18 will still work in 20. It will. They just won't be able to modify it yet. Again, they'll need to wait till SP1, which will come out later. Makes perfect one. sense. Um, now, this one as a sales manager is exciting to me, uh, and I've got some sneak peeks, so I'm excited for your answer. Uh, are there any updates around reporting? Wow, that's a great one, and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, we just did some VIP meetings in Tampa recently, and uh, honestly, some of the talent team came and joined us. It was great to see them as always, and that was one of the hottest topics. Every partner brought it up, and we were quite excited to unveil that 36 is revamping our reporting module. Um, you've probably already seen, if you've taken a look at the, the back end of V20 on any of our you know, alpha, beta, even the release candidates, uh, the interface looks a little bit different. We're redeveloping the reports. Uh, we're, we're changing how data is written to the CDR, how events are categorized. And ultimately with the improvement in the call manager, it will make for better, more accurate reports. So literally across the board, you're gonna see a massive step forward with 3CX when it comes to reporting. We know it's important. It's been an issue in the past and we've done our best to address it, and you're going to see further improvements. We're not going to stop here. We're going to continue developing that because it's a big ticket item. But one of the things that we also are going to do, because people are saying, you know, right now you can get the raw data, but you can't make a graph or a chart. So what we're hoping to do is roll in the ability uh, to use Grafana, and many people are already using that. It's, a, it's kind of an enterprise caliber tool. And so that way you can go in and you can go through, sort the data yourself, develop your own, you know, whatever chart, graph, et cetera, that you want to be able to manipulate that data uh, into the way you want to view it. So again, I think that will be a huge step forward and we got a lot of positive feedback when we address that. With that's incredible. Uh, I know that's going to be exciting around, uh, uh, around the whole community. Um, and hopefully I saw we had a, a guest speaker join for a moment there in the background. I hope that wasn't too distracting. I apologize. <laughs> He's uh, learned some sneaky ways to get into my office nowadays. Um, <laughs> He's excited about as soon as, as, soon as we like started talking about report, he had to get up and he wasn't sitting down anymore. Um, now, uh, in version 20 um, beta, uh, now I'm going to clarify that this was in beta that I saw this running captures appeared to be removed. Is there plans for, is that a permanent plan or is that going to be re-added somewhere? No, definitely not. That is something that's quite important. And I think we'll see that as well in SP2. We may even see it in the full release. I know they're, you know, really tirelessly working on that. So whether it makes it in the full release that's coming up or in SP1, it's definitely coming back. Uh, that's a critical piece. Now, let, let me give you one more sneak peek. You'd asked me earlier about exciting things. This also is a really exciting piece. And so this is a natural segue into that. Um, one of the things we're doing is we're in, including a monitoring tool. So if you want to be able to see without doing, say, a Wireshark capture, you want to be able to see on which side of the call is experiencing the audio issue, you'll be able to do that directly from your monitor. And you can do that at an extension level. So I can go into my web client and click on monitor and I can be able to see uh, live where that issue is. And I can set it up and I can run it for a specific amount of time uh, because it takes up resource. I can't enable everyone uh, in that same type of tool. You'll be able to do that differently, uh, but you can set it up and you can run that and be able to do some troubleshooting on your own 
and, and maybe not even need tech support because then you can see uh, it's on my side. Maybe I've got a network issue or it's on the other side. Maybe it's a SIP trunk issue. Well, between AI and uh, monitoring tools, it sounds like uh, support's going to be out of a job pretty soon here. <laughs> 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 I think a lot of people would be happy about that, actually. But um, again, uh, we want people to focus on sales. So if we can take the burden off of support, give them something that's easy to use, easy to support, they can focus more efforts on uh, actually yeah, absolutely. selling the product. Absolutely. Absolutely. That productive. makes sense. Um, I really appreciate all the uh, answers you've given us around version 20 and the, the actual software updates themselves today. Um, I think it's been extremely productive and helpful. Um, I got one more question that's a, a little bit of a curveball here. Um, with the updates in the end of the year, is there any notable changes slash additions around the partner program itself? Um, actually, it's a great question. Not too much of a curveball. Um, yeah, we do have uh, several updates to the partner program. Um, I won't spoil everything, but yes. Um, what we did, because uh, I'll kind of give the big ticket items here, just so people understand what we're doing. We will publicly announce everything very, very soon. I know they're already planning the blog post around that and the email announcements. So uh, we'll be very transparent about the changes. But uh, we had a little bit of a security issue back in April. Um, initially, we thought it was uh, uh, quite catastrophic, but quickly learned that, um, thankfully, we say that very thankfully, it was not um, anything that was overly detrimental, no known losses, either in data or financial that we're aware of. Um, and we went to great extent and great expense to hire a lot of industry leading security firms uh, for various functionalities, pen testing, code review, portal review, system monitoring, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, ones like Mandiant, CrowdStrike and others came in and uh, work tirelessly with our team. So with that, um, you know, we've gone in and we, we had to, we felt like we had to uh, lower the partner targets. We had previously raised them, uh, basically kind of reset. Uh, it's a new year and uh, we hadn't raised them in I think two or three years at that point, but we did push, we rolled them back because we felt like, you know what, we need to do this as a way of saying thank you to our partner, pro, uh, partner uh, base for being loyal, standing with us and walking through this. So what we're doing is reinstating the previous um, uh, targets. So for example, we had lowered bronze. Bronze, our entry level is only a $1,000 uh, entry point. We're actually gonna lower silver as well. Uh, silver will be 5,000. It's currently 7,500. We will roll that down to 5,000. So you're kind of two entry level uh, positions are lower, easier to attain, and uh, because again, we want to encourage those partners, help them learn and grow and train and give them as much benefit as we can initially. And then uh, gold will go to 25,000, which is what it was previously. Uh, same thing with platinum. Previously it was 50, it will go back to 50. So we're going to reinstate that. And then titanium will be reinstated back to 150. So um, other than that, that's really the only notable changes. Okay. To the well, that makes sense. I think. Uh... I think all that's uh, relatively expected, at least from my end, and um, I think it's all good news uh, around the board. Um, but Greg, I can't sure. thank you enough for uh, becoming a guest on this podcast and giving us so much information about version 20. I think it's going to um, make a lot of people happy, excited about uh, some of these new features, um, and uh, give a lot of people a, a little bit of relief around some of these concerns they had, um, which very much could have ended up being just something they saw in the beta version and not final release. Um, so I'll go ahead and link some sure. of those resources that we've talked about, the ideas forum, um, some of those blog posts um, indicating that some of these issues we brought up are already resolved. Um, so I'll have all of that linked in the description. Perfect. Um, but other than that, did you have any other clo closing thoughts or uh, any sign off notes? Yeah, I do. One thing I did want to mention, because uh, we've had quite a few questions about it, but we have not required a recertification uh, since I joined the company seven years ago um, when we went from version 14 to version 15. Um, so what we're going to do when uh, the full release of 20 comes out, we will update the exams um, 
because they they stay on whatever the latest released full release version is. So once 20 is a full release, uh, we will update the exams and we will require a resit. So if you've passed the basic and advanced in the past, you will have to go back and do that. But again, these are pretty uh, straightforward exams, 30 questions, multiple choice. You have to have 25 uh, or more correct in order to pass, but you will have to recertify. I know the next question, I'll go ahead and answer it. Uh, how long will you have to resit? Uh, we'll, we'll give you plenty of time for that. It's not gonna be you know, two week deadline. Um, we'll give you plenty of time. I don't know what plenty of time looks like, but I know we'll be pretty fair with that. So I'm assuming you'll have several months to do that or maybe even longer. So again, I do wanna put that out there because we've had quite a few questions and I think it's fair. Our PBX has evolved massively since the last time we required people to recertify. So it's definitely I think that's understandable, Greg. I don't think there will be too much pushback around that. And like you said, I think it's warranted with uh, a brand new version. Um, with that being said, um, for all of the partner base, but specifically the Telen partner base, uh, we're getting our, our marketing team is just about to launch all the news about the next training event around version 20. Um, so we're going to be doing a sales and technical Perfect. event, um, two separate rooms. One will be dedicated for technical cert certifications, and then we'll also be running a separate room uh, so you can bring some of your sales and marketing team to learn a li little bit more about um, the, the A to Z um, selling to deployment um, of 3CX sales. Um, so we're really excited about that, and it'll be uh, right around April. We'll get the final dates going here, but it'll be right around April so you can get those uh, new certs right away um, into the new year. Super. Happy to hear that. And again, we love partnering with Telen. You guys are a fantastic distributor. We love the enthusiasm. We love the technical expertise. And I also love getting the feedback that's so positive from partners about how you guys come in uh, pre-sales all the way through the process and even into post-sales, um, kind of holding the hand of the partner to ensure uh, a great experience. Well, I appreciate it, Greg. Um, well, on that note, I'm going to sign off. Uh, thank you so much for the version 20 updates and news. Uh, you have a great day, Greg. Wow, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Take care. All righty. I just stopped.